Do you actually need 32-bit float? It was the big marketing push last year and you still see a bit of it filtering through. And some people still believe that 32-bit float is this magical new invention that makes your audio awesome. It isn't. But do you need it? Is it necessary in your studio? Well, let's take a look at what it is and break down if you actually need 32-bit float in your workflow. So this isn't an easy concept to explain and it involves a lot of math. So let's try to do this without math and without falling asleep. Bit depth is basically the amount of volume information you can record per sample of audio, meaning the more bits, the more volume information, right? Yes. So then by that metric, is 32-bit float any good? Yes, it actually is. It allows for much cleaner low input signal audio when gaining up in post. And it also removes the ceiling for audio to be recorded at. You see, when you record an audio source and that audio surpasses zero dBFS, it's called clipping. And in digital recording, it causes some really ugly distortion. And that is because in 16 and 24 bit recording, all the information beyond zero dBFS is essentially thrown out because there wouldn't be enough room to store the data beyond it. I know we're skirting awfully close to math here, but 32 bit float allows for that extra room. That is probably the most basic explanation of bit depth I can give without getting into moving decimal points. If you hunger for more and you want a full breakdown, let me know down below and I can make that happen. Or you can just go watch Julian Krauss break it down for you. I'll have that link down below. So for many, 32-bit float might sound great, right? I mean, you can't peak and no more distortion on your audio. Yay, right? Well, kinda. There are some caveats here. First of all, 32-bit float is only going to benefit you when you're recording. All the benefits of 32-bit float come out in post-processing when you're manipulating the audio. Streamers, I'm sorry, can't really utilize it. But it goes even deeper than that. You see, the dynamic range of 32-bit float is really amazing. But your signal chain may want to have a word with you. There are multiple things in your chain that may struggle with loud sounds, including your microphone, your preamps, your converters. All these things have their own dynamic range and will limit the levels you can record at. So before you hop out to record a jet engine with your fancy 32-bit float, you might want to consider that. Which all this means you still have to pay attention when you're recording to get decent sounding audio. Leading me to another misconception about 32-bit float and that it sounds better than 24-bit audio. And that's just flat out not true. The same signal recorded without peaking will sound identical in either 24-bit or 32-bit float. It will be indistinguishable. And to top it all off, there are certain DAWs that don't really play well with 32-bit float. Now it has gotten better as products show up with it, but you might want to do a double check before you just jump in. And with all that, there might be a few confused individuals right now wondering, well, what the hell is 32-bit float actually good for then? Okay, time for the good, but these are very use case specific. Keep that in mind. You see, 32-bit float allows you to have a bit more wiggle room when you're recording something that might be unpredictable, like something that might get loud all of a sudden or really quiet. Generally, professional studios and audio engineers record audio sources with what they call headroom. Now, you're never going to see an engineer recording anything beyond NEG-12, and for most, that's really pushing it, as most of them stay around NEG-18. So yes, 32-bit float in a professional environment is a welcome thing, but it's hardly being relied upon as a way to do less work. It's more of a fail-safe, so if shit hits a fan, it's not a wasted take. Learning how to gain stage is still extremely important in these situations because even with the fail-safe, it creates less work in the mixing process. But let's get back to the unpredictable audio. When these, the Rode Wireless Pro came out, I said these were perhaps the best integration of 32-bit float that I've ever seen. And then the Rode Interview Pro came out and I re-upped that statement. Because field audio can be the most unpredictable audio that you ever record. Especially if you're recording something for the first time, like a train horn as it blasts through your hometown. Or that person that just starts shouting in the middle of an interview because of whatever reason. Sometimes you only got one shot to get it right. And in those circumstances, yes, 32-bit float is a massive selling point for a piece of gear. 
So then Aiden, why is this still being pushed as a benefit to a lot of audio gear? Well, marketing is a strange thing. And with the influx of new people in audio over the last several years, it feels like the industry is trying to find new things every year to hook people in. Onboard effects like DSP, high gain, 32-bit float, they've all spent time as marketing fluff. Not that any of these things are bad per se, but remembering, try to look past the marketing to see what is truly beneath it. Well, a lot of this stuff is marketed as the next new shiny thing that you need to take your recordings to the next level. It's generally stuff that you actually don't need. And when you're aware of this, you might end up saving a ton of money in the end. Cheers, guys, and thanks for watching.